Hello, in this lecture we're going to be talking about treasury stock. At the end of this, we will be able to define what treasury stock is, journalize the purchase of treasury stock, and journalize the sale of treasury stock. So the equity section being what is generally different when we go from a sole proprietor to a partnership to a corporation. Part of the equity section being treasury stock, so we can take a look at that equity section, drill in on these types of transactions. We're going to start off with our trial balance so we can see the big picture as we go through our transactions related to the equity section related to treasury stocks we've got our assets here debits has no brackets around it so we're representing uh, debits by positive or non-bracketed numbers we have the liabilities with accounts payable and common and dividends payable and then we've got the equity section this is of course where we will be focusing in on the major pieces of the equity section for a corporation being the common stock traditionally and the retained earnings now there's a couple other accounts related to them of course common stock being what was issued in terms of stock kind of like an investment but if it's issued at a par value then we're going to say it's at the stated rate the stated par value and that's kind of like a made up number we only do that just to make all the common stocks basically the same so that if we looked at the financial statement and we saw 500,000 and it was ten dollar par value we can then divide those two out and say well there must be 50,000 shares out there it's kind of like poker chips if we went to a casino we want them all to be same the same However, the $10 par value is not market value, and that's the thing to kind of remember. When we are issuing the stock, we're not going to issue it to other people for par value if they were willing to pay more, par value normally being below market value. Therefore, anything that's paid to us above the par value, then we will accept that, and when we record that journal entry, for example, when this was recorded, if we recorded it all at one transaction, if we sold all the stock at one time, then we would have got uh, 560000 and we would debit cash by that 560 and then we would credit common stock for the par value of 500,000 because we sold 50,000 shares at $10 par even though we got 560 and the difference would go to the paid in capital. So that's what this paid in capital is. These two numbers here represent basically the investment and then the retained earnings then traditionally is the amount of income that has been retained over the years. So if we looked at a sole proprietor, we'd have one capital account. That capital account would be the net investments and it would include basically the retained earnings. Note that when we look at a corporation, we're basically just breaking those two things out. We're saying, hey, this is the investment that's different than the retained earnings, the amount of money that we have earned throughout the time period. Why is that important? One reason it's important is that when we distribute the retained earnings, if it's we're a C corporation, we need to determine whether it was earnings that were received that are going to be received by the, the, the shareholders or if it was a return on capital. One reason is because there are tax differences. So we basically need to break those two things out. If it's a, a dividend, then they're going to be taxed on it. If it's a return on capital, then the taxes could be different on it. So we need to make sure that uh, those two things are different. We will now be focusing in on treasury stock. So what we're gonna do is buy back our own stock. So this is going to be another fairly unusual kind of transaction when we look at a corporation. Not every corporation is gonna be buying back their own stock, but it is very possible to do so, meaning if our stock is out there on the stock exchange, we may want to actually purchase it back for various reasons. We might want to be adjusting the price of the amount of stock is out there. Similar to if you think about how much money is out, out in the market that uh, the Federal Reserve may put more money or less money out into the market in order to make some adjustments in terms of the value of the dollar. Similar time of things may be done in terms of purchasing back the stock from the market. So what we're going to say here is we're going to purchase back our own stock. That's going to be treasury stock. So we issued our stock into the market, the 50,000 shares, and now we're going to say we're going to buy some of that back. And we're going to say that we're going to buy 5,000 of our own shares from somebody else not ourselves because somebody else owns our the shares the corporate stairs so the management decided to purchase shares from the market and we're going to buy 5,000 shares at $25 or 125,000 so the question is of course how do we record this if we were to buy someone else's shares we were buying shares in Apple then of course we would just credit the 125,000 cash that we would pay and we would debit investment some type of investment account an asset account in Apple now, the cash is still the same here. We still paid $125,000, so we know that is cash affected? Yeah, cash is a debit balance. We're going to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it. We're going to credit cash. I would always think about cash first and say cash is going to be credited, so we know that we're going to have a credit to cash. This is what's going to happen to cash. It's a debit balance. We're going to credit it. It's going to go down on the trial balance. What's the other side? We know that we're going to have to debit something 
we're going to debit treasury stock. So when we buy back our own stock, that's going to be called treasury stock. It's a debit just like if we put an asset on the books. The journal entry looks pretty much the same, except the fact that when we post it, note where treasury stock is, it's down here on the equity section. And that's the only thing that really differs in a lot of the transactions we'll look at. If we purchase somebody else's stock, we would still debit the stock, the investment, and we would credit cash. But in that case, somebody else's stock would, of course, be investment to us. When we purchase back our own stock, it's going to be in the equity section here. And that's because, of course, it's our own stock. So if we were to look at the full trial balance, pull over all the numbers, we would have the effect here. Cash is going down. Treasury stocks going up. What does that do to total equity? It, of course, brings total equity down, being uh, this plus this minus this plus this would be the total equity that we're talking about here. And let's take a look at the next transaction. Let's say we declared a dividend now. So we're going to say there's a $2 dividend per share. So dividends being like draws for a corporation, except for the fact with a draw, the uh, individual, the, per the corporate owner, the draw of the sole proprietor can draw anytime they want, or the draws for a partnership, they can decide when to make the draw. In terms of a corporation, you, may you need to make a decision on the corporate level because once we declare a dividend, all stocks being the same, all dividends need to be the same. So it's not like one shareholder can take a draw like we could in a, in a sole proprietor or a partner and the other one can't. All dividends need to be the same. So if we declare a dividend, then how are we going to record that? We're going to say the common stock outstanding was 50000 but we're not going to pay basically a dividend to ourselves, so we're going to have to track the amount of treasury stocks out there. The, the trial balance note only gives us the number that we purchased it for in dollars, of course. So what we're going to have to do is have some other tracking in terms of how many treasury stocks did we purchase. And that may not be uh, present on something like a trial balance. You're going to have to track that separately. But we know we purchased 5,000. That means we have 45,000 after the treasury stock. And then if we multiply that times $2, $2 dividend, we're going to say we have dividends of 90,000 in this case. So now that's what we're going to record. Just remember, we got to remove the treasury stock when we issue dividends. That's the point here. What's the journal entry going to be? We may first ask, is cash affected? Remember, when we issue the dividend, cash may not be affected. And that's because there's going to be a couple points. There's like some bureaucracy we have to go through when we issue a dividend, more so than we take a draw out. If we took a draw out, we could just say, okay, we're going to credit cash and we're going to uh, debit the draw account or the capital account, the draw account, the equity is going to go down. Here, we're going to have to basically declare the dividend, and then we're going to have to see when, what point in time is it going to be that those dividends are going to go out to the shareholders at that point in time, and then we're going to have to finally pay out the dividend. So we have a bit more of a process for the recording of the dividend. Therefore, first we're going to record the dividend. It's going to come out of retained earnings. So remember, retained earnings is kind of like the capital account. Remember, the capital account for a partnership has both the, the accumulation of retained earnings, the accumulation of income, and the investment. And here they're broken out. The investment's up here, common stock, retained earnings is just the accumulation, less anything that's been taken out. So we're gonna reduce that, it's a credit balance. It's gonna go down by the 90,000, and that's gonna reduce the retained earnings. And then the other side, at this point, isn't gonna go to cash yet, because we didn't yet pay cash. It's gonna come out of the common uh, dividends payable. So we're gonna make a liability account saying, we declared the dividend, we know we owe the dividend, and we're going to pay it out once we get through with the bureaucratic process of declaring the dividend and deciding who's gonna get the dividend, depending on who's holding the stock at the time uh, that we decide. Therefore, the liability is gonna go up to 90,000, and there's the declaration of the dividend. If we pull over all other accounts then, we've got the uh, dividend payables going up to the 90,000 the credit, and the retained earnings then is going down. Credit balance is gonna be debited, doing the opposite, making it go down. We're back in balance, no effect on net income. The next step in the declaration of the dividend or the dividend process is of course paying the dividend. So we're gonna decide what point in time people are gonna get paid, depending on who's gonna owe the dip, own the stock at that point in time. There's, those are the individuals that will receive the payment on the dividend. So now we'll actually pay the dividend. So is cash affected here? We're gonna say, yeah, we're actually gonna pay out the dividend to the owners. So cash is gonna go down by that 90,000 that we declared. And the debit then is gonna to go to the payable that we have here. So cash is going to go down and the debit's going to the payable. So we owed the 90000 that we put on. Now we're actually going to pay it out. 90000 is going to uh, be uh, debited, bringing it down. So we have 90000 credit. We're going to debit 90000 bringing the payable back down to zero. And now the dividend process has been completed. 
If we bring in all the other numbers, of course, cash goes down, uh, the dividends payable goes down, no effect on net income down here for a dividend, as is the case with something like a draw. Now we're gonna sell treasury stock. So we're gonna say we're gonna sell some of the 1,500 treasury stock that we purchased of our own company for $30. So this treasury stock's on the books. This Notice it doesn't give us the total amount of treasury stocks we have on the books on the trial balance. That's the dollar amount that we purchased it for. We're gonna have to look up how many shares we had and how much they cost us in a similar way we would if we bought some other stock. If we had some other investment in like Apple up here and we sold some Apple stock, then we'd have to say, okay, what was the cost of that stock? Because we may not have sold all the stock that we had then purchased. Same thing here. We're not going to sell everything that we just purchased. We're only selling 1,500 shares. Therefore, we're going to have to do some calculation here. We're going to bring up our table. We're going to say the sales price, 1,500 times $30, means we're going to receive $45,000 for it. So we put it back on the market. Someone was willing to pay $30 for it, even though the cost of what that 1,500, remember, was only $25. So this re is reported at $25 per share that's on the uh, trial balance. And we sold it, of course, for $30. Therefore, 1,500 times 25 means that we have a cost for those 1,500 shares of 37,500. And the difference, we can calculate a couple different ways. We can take the difference here, 7,500. We can also take that 1,005 times the difference per share, 30 minus 25. 1,005 minus 30 minus times 5 brings us to that 7,500. So those are two ways we could basically get to that same number. Now, the, the thing is, if this was a sale of someone else's stock and not our own treasury stock, that 7,500 would be a gain in this case. We sold it for more than we purchased it for. But of course, it being treasury stock, we're going to have to deal with that. Let's work through the journal entry, close to what we know, and then see how we're going to have to deal with that 7,500 in order to make the journal entry balance out. So we're going to say that cash is going to go up. We got 45,000. So cash is going to go up by the 45,000, and it's going to be a debit to cash. Then the treasury stock we know has to go down. This is the treasury stock. It's light, it's, it looks just like someone it's like an asset. It looks like an asset account that if we had someone else's investment, except it's in the equity section, it has a debit balance. We need to make it go down because we sold some of it for 37.5. So we're going to credit it 37.5. And then, of course, we have this problem that the debits don't equal the credits because we sold it for more than we purchased it for. And that difference, that 7,005, we're not going to put to gain as we would if it was some other stock because it's our own stock. What we're going to do is just park it here in this in this equity account called paid in capital on treasury stock. So paid in capital on treasury stock is going to uh, go up in this case in the credit direction which is gonna increase the equity account. So that's gonna be kind of the tricky thing with treasury stock. Everything else is basically the same as if we bought someone else's stock except the treasury stock is in the equity section and we have this next paid in capital uh, that will be on the books until the treasury stock is, is fully uh, resold out and we'll have to clear those two things out and we'll see that process next. If we pull over all the other accounts is what we have. Cash is going up and we've got the treasury stock is going down. The paid in capital here, no effect on on the income statement, no effect on net income. Now we're going to sell the rest of the treasury stock. We're going to sell the, the remaining 3,500 uh, shares and this time we sold them for $20. So instead of being able to get a market price of 30, now we have a market price of 20. We're going to see what happens there and we're going to see what happens when we clear out the treasury stock. We're going to have to deal with the fact that we have this paid in capital account. That means gonna, it's going to have to go to zero once we get rid of all the treasury stock in some way as well. So let's see what that process looks like. We're going to say the sale for 3,500 shares at $20. Multiplying that out gives us $70,000. We're going to say that the cost then is that 3,500 times what we paid for our stock when we purchased it would be the $25. And that means that we the cost was 87,500 for those 3,500 shares. Therefore, we have a loss in this case of 17,500 on that transaction. Again, we're going to have to deal how we're going to deal with that gain or loss. But in, if it was a normal transaction, it would be a loss, meaning the cost that we purchased it for is more than the sales price that we paid for it. We could also calculate that by 3,500 times the 20 minus the 25, $5 loss per share would give us the 17,500. Now when we journalize this, we're going to say, okay, is cash affected? Yeah, we got 70,000. Cash is going to go up by the 70,000. Then we're going to have to take the treasury stock off the books. We can do that. We can say that two different ways. We can say, well, yeah, Treasury stock is going to go off by that uh, 87500 We also know 
that we sold all the remaining shares of stock. Therefore, this account needs to be at zero at the end of this because we sold all the stock that we had. So there's the 87,500 bringing it down to zero. Now the next piece of this is that normally we would just say, okay, the 17,500 is the difference. And last time we just kind of put that into the paid in capital account, but we can't really do that this time because if we put the 17,500 into the paid in capital account, what will happen is that it will, it'll still have a balance in it and it can't still have a balance in it if we have no treasury stock. So it, these two accounts are linked. It doesn't make any sense to have something in paid in capital and have no treasury stock. So if this is at zero, that means this needs to be at zero. So that's why it's important to really look at a trial balance or have the T accounts when you're working through these problems that'll help you out and you're saying, well, this logically needs to be zero once we're done with this process. Therefore, that 7,500 is a credit. We need to debit it by that 7,500. Now we can put in the plug. We could say instead of the plug being that 17,500, we're gonna say debits minus the credits here. I'll post that out first. Debits minus the credits will be that 10,000. So if we take the, this plus this minus this, we're gonna need another debit of 10,000 in order for the 70 plus the 75 plus the 10 to equal the 87.5. That's gonna be the plug. Where's it gonna go? We're gonna put it into retained earnings. So that, that process, just basically have to remember that at the end of this process. Uh, when we sell off all the treasury stocks, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to make treasury stock go to zero. We're gonna have to make uh, painting capital go to zero. And then the difference is gonna go to retained earnings in order to make our, our journal entry balance out. That's basically how it's gonna work. So there's the 10,000 here. It's basically reducing uh, retained earnings because it's a debit and retained earnings is a credit balance account. Bringing retained earnings down. If we look at the full transaction here, we've got cash. We've got uh, the treasury stock back at zero. We've got the paid in capital going down to zero. And then we had to put the 10,000 decrease in retained earnings. No effect on net income from the transactions related to treasury stock.